If you could have a drink with anyone in the theater world, who would it be? I'm Anthony Caparelli, and I'm running through my list. Each week, I'll sit down with cast members, bartenders, and personalities from New York's theater district and get a behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to live, work, and play on Broadway. Come have a drink with us on Broadway Bartender. Welcome to Broadway Bartender. My name is Anthony Caparelli. We are at New World Stages in the heart of Manhattan's theater district, home to my show, The Imbibe, a spirited history of drinking. And this week, we're making drinks with a bit of a World War II theme. And I think you're going to figure out why that is when you see our special guests. So the first one we're going to make is a really, really classic cocktail called a sidecar. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill my mixing tin with ice. And this is really nothing more than a brandy sour. Uh, we're going to start with uh, some cognac. And I want about two ounces per drink. So I'm going to do about a 16 count because I'm making four drinks today. I have three guests with me. And then I'm going to use some lemon juice is my sour. So I'm going to do the juice of four lemon halves. And as usual, I'm going to take the last one and drop it in the tin so that the cognac, which is a type of brandy, can dissolve all of the essential oils in the skin, which is where most of the lemon flavor is. So this will be the fourth. And when I'm done with that, it goes right in the mixing tin. And then I need to sweeten this just a little bit. So I have some simple syrup. I'm gonna do about a quarter ounce per drink, which in this case for four drinks is one ounce of simple syrup. And then I want about a half ounce of orange liqueur per drink, which is two ounces total. And I am using Cointreau, which is really a brand name. Uh, orange triple sec. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this up really, really well. As always, I want to chill the ingredients, I want to aerate the ingredients, and I want to dilute the ingredients. There isn't a lot of mixer in this. It's pretty much just the lemon juice. So once that is all mixed, and you can see when I pour this, I will end up with a nice foam head on the top, and that means the drink is aerated, so all those bubbles will carry the flavor and aroma of the drink up to your nose while you are enjoying it. And I have some ice chips on the drink, which will keep it cold, and I'm going to garnish this with a lemon peel, and I'm going to pop that right over the drink, and just rim the glass to get some of those essential oils on the drink. And that is our completed sidecar, which I am serving to the cast of Bandstand. Hey. Welcome, wow. gentlemen. So we have Alex <laughs> right. Bender, right. Brandon J. Ellis, and James Nathan Hopkins with us today. Good to Cheers, see you. gentlemen. Yeah. That was the coolest thing I've ever yeah, seen. Right? So cool. Seriously? Right. Come on. Well, let's that see. Was... Thank you. That oh, was great. Great. Do you like that? Yeah, yes. That's great. And you make it look so artistic. Why, thank you. You said artistic, right? Yes. Yes, good. So here's the thing about these drinks that I like, really, really classic cocktails, is they're so simple and they all follow the same template. This is, as I said, just a brandy sour, which is any spirit mixed with lemon or lime juice and then sweetened with simple syrup. So if you guys, you guys know enough about cocktails to know if I were to do that with like tequila with lime juice and simple syrup, that drink actually has a name. If I, what is it? Is it tequila sour, tequila sunday? It is, well, it's a tequila sour, but it's margarita is all oh, it is. Yeah. And so this drink that I just made was brandy, lemon juice, triple sec, and sweetener, okay. sa simple syrup. If I did tequila, lime juice, triple sec, and sweetener, it's a margarita, oh, yeah. right? Totally. So we just like to kind of mix things up, but I like to point that out because it allows people to make really good tasting drinks based on whatever they happen to have. So you don't yes. have to necessarily go to the supermarket or the liquor store before you throw in a party, just see what you have and put them together in the right order. Enough about <laughs> the <laughs> drinks though, because I want to talk about Bandstand. Talk to me guys, what this, this, this is an amazing concept. Um, who, wants to, who wants to be the spokesperson? It's a, it's, it's a pretty remarkable show. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I think I, you know, we're all just thrilled to be a part of it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's a, a set in uh, 1945, just at the end of World War II. Um, guys are coming back from the war. They're sort of seeing that things aren't exactly the way that they left them. The, the country, the world has sort of moved 
past where they were when they left. Um, and the, one of the vets in question, uh, Donnie Nowitzki, played by Corey Cott, uh, finds out about a contest on the radio he, to put together a swing band to write the next great tribute to the troops. And uh, the winner of the contest propels them to instant stardom, so he puts together a band consisting of us and a couple other uh, couple other musician actors. And um, through playing, they don't drink, so they're not here. Right, right. Through playing music, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <Wow. laughs> and they call themselves <laughs> musicians. Yeah, really. Come yeah, on. Title from Hacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but through playing music and through coming together as a group, they they are able to heal and. Uh, and come to terms with what they've been through. So, uh, forgive me if I'm getting this wrong or trivializing it anyway, but it, is it almost like American Idol 1.0 or something like that? I mean, this this search for a group that is going to then become instantly famous. I mean, how did that work? You could sort of say I'd say it's more, it's more about the redemptive and healing quality of music, and particularly about um, what is it like for veterans. Where everybody loves to talk about the action sequence when they're in battle, when the fighting's happening, but most of their lives is actually when they come back and they have to reintegrate into a society that's moved on without them. And this show, much like if you've seen the film from the 40s, The Best Years of Our Lives, mm. is about veterans coming back and going, how am I going to be a part of this society? How am I going to be with my family again? Or how am I going to go and hold down a job with, with, with these things? And uh, it's about how music, art, can help uh, these guys be human again and, and be okay be okay with not being okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so PTSD obviously is what we're talking about here or, or yeah, is yeah, it more complicated than that? I wouldn't say that that is the central theme of the show at all, mm -hmm. but it all of these guys are definitely dealing with demons. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the community of us coming together to play in the band, like we could all be playing individually and that would make us happy. But what keeps us like uh, driving forward is when Donnie brings us together as a band to play as a community and that sense of collaboration with other artists and with the other people that we all went through the war together and now we're all playing music together. I think that's what makes us survive and excel. And it really um, is a, jo it's a, it's a joyful story. It's, a, it's easy to say, to talk about like these guys coming back and, and dealing with it and it sounds very dark, but it, it really isn't. Of course there are these dark things that we're not shying away from and we're not afraid to talk about or deal with in the story, but the story is about joy. It's about reaching through and grasping for light. That's what every character in the, in, the, in the story is trying to reach for light through that veil of whatever they're dealing one of the, with. One of the really cool things is that everybody in the show plays their own instruments. I mean, for, for, for those like us, I mean, we've all been playing for a while, but you got guys like Corey Cott, who yeah. wasn't a pianist originally. And it's incredible. For the past year and a half, he's been playing like three or four hours a day, and now he's doing some insanely it difficult really stride. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. But yeah, it's, so, so. What about you, that, that one lick? <clears throat> There's a lick that he showed him in the lab like two years ago. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult, because Nate is a, is a Berkeley educated uh, piano player. Mm -hmm. And uh, he showed Corey this lick, and we were all like, oh, and, and obviously Corey wanted to do it. And now he's just like, yeah. Doing it like it's nothing, like looking Spiders at us and joking piano. around. And really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but so these guys, we all play our own instrument, and there's something so viscerally cool and uplifting about watching like Alex Bender rip a high trumpet solo. You know? Yeah. It's, it, it really is about the joy of playing. And these guys, they're um, with a lot of musicians who, who dedicate their life to this or who have left it behind to go to war and come back and want to be artists again. Their emotional lives are wrapped up in their music, much like other artists' emotional lives are wrapped up in their art. So um, it's, a, it's another tool with which to express and tell the story, uh, as, as opposed to maybe, and it could be considered an impediment as uh, having another thing to worry about, but I actually think it yeah. drives the story more. Yeah. Wow, so this is fascinating to me. Um, so it seems like, I mean, because, you know, right, I can think of a million uses, but I mean, you, you even look at shows like Band of Brothers, right? Mm -hmm. um, where they, they talk about um, combat organizations referred to as bands, and then they come home and it's just a completely different way. I never thought it in that context. So it's more than just the music, it's the fact that it's a, a company of people, again, working towards a common goal, but one that's not destructive, but is constructive. Yes. Is that yeah. kind of where yeah, this goes? Absolutely. absolutely, it's putting together this, this group of guys, it, it is like... What an amazing yeah. analogy, or whatever you want, it's the wrong word, but uh, that's, that's a fantastic structure for telling this story. It really and is. There's the drama in the story where um, there's this contest, and, and we think that 
or when, once we win, we think, oh, we're going to New York. Uh, that's the whole point of this, this competition is you get to go to New York, you get to do the, the national contest. You have to win the, the preliminaries first in each state. So we win Ohio. And then we think, oh, we're going like, you know, first class to New York City and like we're, you know, everything will be set up for us. Then we realize that we have to pay for it. And it's just a two hour contest. So they're like, they don't expect necessarily every state to have a band. And it's just like, well, whoever, Whoever can, you know, all the winners of these states, but there's all these, there's other controversy that comes in. And yeah, we are this band that has to work, like a band of brothers has to fight over these other obstacles all along the way of the show. And what that's dealing with that we, we spoke, we got to sit down several times with, with groups of veterans to talk about their story and just ask about, you know, what is it like? And one of the things that unanimously everyone said is the uh, coming back and having expectations of how you're going to be treated. Because we like to talk about how we, care oh, yeah. so much for our troops and then they came back and they're like you say that but that's not what mm -hmm. I'm feeling so it's about the all of these expectations being dashed constantly and and at the same time people waving a flag around and saying that you know welcome home um, you, and you found that was universal yes L really because that's fascinating because I know growing up that was something we always associated with 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 Vietnam in particular that we did wrong with Vietnam we actively um, villainized yes. people that went to Vietnam. Um, it's whereas, not active anymore. It's, it's Burdell. Right, exactly. Um, but World War II, you're saying, same feedback from these guys. We kind of sold them a bill of goods, told them they were going to be treated as heroes for, you know, risking their lives, and then they didn't actually feel that. They, it's weird. Like, they, once again, people would say it. It was a very, so they'd be like, oh, thank you so much, and all this, all, you know, great articles and pictures and posters. And on the surface, yes. But, I mean, I can't say en enough about the best years of our lives that they, yes, that was, that was there, but there's a great scene in Best Years of Our Lives where a guy is put in charge of giving loans to veterans, particularly, and a veteran comes in and says, I need this loan, and uh, I don't have any collateral, but that's, and the guy's like, well, this is my job. I'm, okay, I believe in you, I believe what you're saying, you fought, here's the loan, and then he gets reprimanded by his boss for not asking for collateral. And he's like, but this is what you told me to do. You told me to help them. Right. He's, and they're like, yeah, help them, but not, but like help them just like everybody else. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one, that's. <laughs> one of the most re like beyond rewarding things about this show is occasionally we'll get vets coming to the stage door come, and coming backstage, talking to the cast. And uh, I mean, one that jumps out to me is, is the Vietnam vet yeah, we had yes, a couple of weeks that. ago who, yeah. was, who was saying to, to our group, you know, he never wants to hear the phrase "thank you for your service" again. He's uh, he, it's, what, because, why it just he's, rings hollow. I mean, he, he's he's come back and he's particularly hit, Vietnam vets. Right, 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 right. But he's had people spit in his face. I mean, he's had he p stopped putting a veteran on his job applications because he wasn't getting the work. And instead of wow. and instead of the words "thank you," like give the man a job, he give the man it. a loan. You and know? he did. And it, something give him a mission. That's really spoke to all of us is that he he had been he said, and I, I don't think all veterans feel this way. Particularly, the, I think I do think Vietnam right. conflict veterans do. He said he had felt a lot of years being ashamed actually because of the way people made them feel. And then right. he he saw the show and he came backstage and he was like, "This was the first time that I have felt proud." To be a veteran. In oh my Ryan good! Years. That had to just be life changing. We all for you guys. we yeah. cried for oh, yeah. hours. Yeah. <laughs> he's reaching out to us at curtain calls, and he's like, he's, "I'm, I'm proud." And he I'm was like, for the first time ever, proud yeah. to be a veteran. And he Sorry. didn't he didn't you know have any trouble showing it then. But for all these years since Vietnam, totally the opposite. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, you have um, a, a veterans wall at the show. T talk to me a little bit about that. And, and other interactions you have. We, uh, the, the stairwell leading up to, to the dressing rooms, there's a, there's a whole wall and it's covered with photos of uh, friends and family of everyone in the cast and the crew who have served. And um, it, it's, the, the theater's full of little tributes to the, to the vets in our lives. Every day before the show, we do, uh, the, the dancers will do a lift call, we'll do a, a tuning thing, we'll play a song or two, and then we'll circle up and we dedicate every show to, uh, to a vet. Someone brings in a name and and uh, yeah, we start with family and then it started to branch out into friends of ours and then we'd start to meet people on the street who said you were in bandstand. My uncle did this or I did this, and then we'd come back and tell the story of who we met on mm -hmm. the street that day and dedicate wow. the, and the show. Mm -hmm. would be and actually, more. our house manager. Yeah, I was walking. I I've known Billy our, Billy Mitchell, who's like the best house manager ever. I was just walking down to the stage and I always walk by and I take a look at the wall and read a new story every night. And I saw Billy Mitchell and I was like, that. 
is that actually him? Like I thought it was people's dads and grandfathers. That was right. Billy. And so that night we were able to dedicate the show to Billy who was standing there and who sees the show every night and which is so like special That's for us. That's incredible. It, yeah, it just the show, I don't know. This is my first Broadway show I've worked on as an actor like this. But I don't think there's other shows like this. I mean, I've seen a lot that have such a significant impact on all of us too so much that we care about the show so much. I mean, I think every show cares about the show, but sure. like we there's like a service that we get to do with the show too. Mm -hmm. yeah. More than just the normal entertainment, which you come in and you you're entertained for a few hours, you forget all the other stuff of the day. But this is this lasts a little longer, a lot longer. I mean, it sounds like the audience is impacting you as much as you're impacting them. Oh, that's yeah. There's that's one <laughs> there's one time that really sticks out with us that there was we there's this kind of huddle speech at the like a St. Crispin's Day speech kind of that happens towards the end or Corey, uh, Donnie is trying to get us all riled up, and um, he finishes with that speech, and there, this was at Paper Mill, and like two rows back, we hear a guy just go, ooh, rah, who, and we all were like, ugh, oh, <laughs> like chill. it hit us so chill. chill. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a yeah. Marine vet that was just like, right and, a, and that's it. happened a couple times where a vet like can't, uh, has to say something, or right. has to. Right. Or, or the mother of a vet. Or the or mother the of a vet. Mother of a vet sent us a letter right. mm -hmm. about like that stuff, and oh man, it's it's yeah, you're right. It affects us as much, if not more, than we could possibly ever affect. And wow. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Well, guys, I mean, I just what an amazing experience, and, and congratulations. I mean, you got a couple Tony nominations it's coming remarkable. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, Tony nominated dancers now. <laughs> yeah. That's like can never take that, that away. Yeah. No, you can yeah. never take that because like choreography is one, and yeah. then what was the other the one? Best orchestration. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. which. And you guys are right, the musicians. I mean, you're playing it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about the orchestrations. You've got the onstage band of us. You've got a pit of twelve beyond amazing musicians. musicians, and then yeah. you get a few times in the show where the two bands are playing together, and it just it's like a sings. Cool big band sound. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And cool. you guys were all musicians first. Is that right? Or, or at least parallel to the acting? Or uh, the, 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 yeah, I, I, I went to school for acting. I've got my degree in acting, but. Uh, I, did, I was a musician up through college. Uh, like cello I, first. Cello was my first instrument. And then bass and for the show. I, wow. Like, all these people have hidden talents that I had no idea what I wanted. <laughs> these guys, though, are pros. I, I started playing piano when I was four. I picked up sax when I was 10. And up until I moved to New York and started acting and doing off-Broadway stuff and eventually Broadway stuff, um, I was playing keyboard and singing in weddings. I was doing dueling piano shows. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah. I you was, ran Hell at the Moon. Yeah, uh, yeah. Howell the Moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was the entertainment director of Howell up on 52nd. And now you're a nominated dancer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, to you, I will friend. drink to that. You're oh, no. the artistic honor. Amen. <laughs> Which, right? I mean, and, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to be with the show and to, you know, grow as an actor with these guys and do scene work alongside this one and freaking Ed, Corey Cott and Laura. This guy, um, this guy was literally ripped out of the pit the second week oh, of rehearsal. Oh, I want to hear about this story. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Tell me, start, what happened? You okay. were playing in the well, pit. Okay, I was supposed to be playing in the pit. There's a, the, the guy who had no, done... Wait, what's your instrument? So I play trumpet. Okay. I don't know the character's I played Nick. trumpet. Yeah? Terrible. Awesome. For 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I was first right, chair no all your high school. Now. All right, so go ahead. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. We gotta go uh, off for a drink. Awesome. All right, go ahead. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a great trumpet player, Joey Pira, who they brought in from Vegas, who the writers discovered out there. They brought him out. He did the show at Paper Mill. He had done all the labs and everything. The night before the first rehearsal, he had an injury. Um, I got a call the next morning saying, hey, this just happened. This is from one of the orchestrators who just got the nominations. Um, Greg Anthony Rass and, and uh, Bill Elliott are orchestrators who were phenomenal. Awesome. Shout out to Greg and Bill. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, they said, hey, this just happened to our trumpet player. We, you know, you're, you're going to be playing trumpet in the pit. Do you have, uh, do you have any interest in, in auditioning for the onstage role? And I was like, I, I seriously was just waking up. They called me earlier in the morning. And I was like, well, uh, what, no, no, like, no, no, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, I, I said no, at least either to him or to, he said, well, I, whatever you say to me is fine, but, like, uh, we've already called the casting agents, and they're going to be calling you any minute, so if you, if you really want to say no, say no to them, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> I was, like, just waking up, and by the time, like, the, they called me, like, ten minutes later, they went through the whole story again with me, I was able to breathe a little bit and say, Okay, I could I could come in for the audition. It was two days later, so I took it really seriously, worked hard. I actually took some acting, like four acting classes, just for fun, because I realized it was probably something I wasn't very good at. Uh, <laughs> you were that's wrong. why. That's the whole reason I went to grad school. I realized I sucked at that, so I should <laughs> learn a whole different part of trumpet playing. Anyway, um, so yeah, took the audition real seriously. Got in. They called me 45 minutes after the audition. They said, 
So did you did you come in today just because you wanted to appease us? And uh, I knew a lot of the people there, and or did or uh, or do you actually want to do this because Andy wants to hire you? And I was like, all right, well, I mean, in the first like two hours after you called me, no, I was not interested. I actually gave the, I called them back with all these other recommendations of tremor players. <laughs> <laughs> That was, so wait, that was my coping call, mechanism. You said no, <laughs> and <laughs> they gave you a mulligan? Are you kidding me? We have a song in the show called I Know a Guy, where one guy in the band is recommending the next yeah. guy in the band to oh. be in the band, yeah. and he literally that. pulled he an that. I Know a Guy. I seriously recommended other people, because I was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to do it. Anyway, and he like every say, actor in New York wants to strangle him to death. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> man, that's amazing! <laughs> and then every pit musician in New York is like, "I totally get it." <laughs> yeah. You were right. You were right. Yeah, so, yeah, I loved all that. You should have seen the first few days of rehearsal. I mean, I, I mean, all the other actors who are jealous of me, they'd be like, "Well, I don't want to be his level at that point." You know, like I had to work really, really, really hard. And, he was and so all these guys, did. well, so that's gay. the thing. I mean, he's everyone in the cast like was so helpful to just say, "Hey, whatever you need." Like, and so I asked so many questions and like. They all gave me so much great advice. And then through the assistant director who they had sort of assigned as like her project to like bring me up to speed. And then Michelle Park who later came in to help me out too. It was like, every, everything just came together. And I, and I guess I had some of it in me from high school. I just had to like remember how to do a little, you know, a lot of it. I had to remember <laughs> a lot. And I hadn't sang or done any of this, sang, dance, acted. That was all sort of new, Ex wow. especially, I mean, Probably high school. Running, sort of skipped. Yeah. But so committed, so like there was never a moment of him oh, like yeah. phoning it in. Like he was like, right. what do you got to say? What do you got to say? What do you got to say? Give me some help. Every yeah. break, every lunch break, every... And I have to butt heads with, with Corey Cott's character of the whole show, the whole first half. It's like, we're both the alpha males in the or two alpha males in the band. Yeah. Maybe more. <laughs> not, not you. <laughs> not your character. <laughs> I got changed. <laughs> um, so I have to keep telling Corey like, I'm the guy in the band who says, your song sucks, like you gotta make this better, like this is not ready yet. And by the way, I'm playing, I'm cheating on you, I'm playing with a different band too. And I'm gonna play with whatever band has a better song. So I have to like, art, have these fights, we have a physical fight. And I'm looking at him telling him this line in rehearsal and he's looking back at me like, who the hell do you think you are telling me this? And I'm like, I know, I'm just like the drum player from the band. Like, why am I here? Like, 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 so that was like, I didn't know if he was acting or serious, like I thought he was serious. <laughs> So anyway, I've learned a lot. Oh, this is great. <laughs> so good decision, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you love I, it? Um, I Not totally yet. have a. I, no, no, I totally. Okay. Love it. I totally love it. All right. It's so much more work than I thought. <laughs> they have, I have a whole other respect for all the interwebs of other, all the thinking that they do about um, how the character comes to life and all the stuff that every actor does on the backstory and how to make things make sense. And when, when you see something in the script, you're like, well, I don't know if I'd say that, like, I, I would do this. But like, that's not your job. Like, your job is to make that work. Right. And so you have to come up with all these different ways to, to make well, that's, that's, everything that's work that you're given. That's one of the coolest things about this thing. I mean, as someone else who's a musician first, you know, we, we in music rehearsals, are able to contribute um, oh, quite yeah. a bit and to, to the guys who are actors yeah. first and foremost. It's like, you know, I think maybe this accent here would work a little better. Mm -hmm. And then when we're doing the scene work, you know, I, I, I would get like the odd note from the guys who were actors first of like, you know, this physicality might be a little better than this and, you know, maybe try an upward inflection on that line. It's just been such a cool collaborative thing in every aspect of this. Right. And so we satisfying cool for spectrum. those of us that are actors for Alex to come in one day and go and, and he'd go like, I really feel like I was going through this like, um, you know, in my inner monologue and we were like, you're what? <laughs> I, had, I, had, I, had, like, I had actor terminology all over my head. Now. Like throwing out emotional life and yeah, actions and objectives and super objectives. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, Alex. And to see these guys, because I went out to see the show at Paper Mill, and to see the show, oh, I didn't and that. not just the show, but how the band has progressed from the band, because Joey was able to like really power through things that would like, you know, I didn't. Uh, what you guys are doing now has elevated so much too. And through all the time, that's good to hear. You know, it's it, the cool thing is we have this full spectrum of actor first, musician last, musician first, actor last, and we've all the five of us have been able, or really seven, mm -hmm. have been able to bring all of each other up. And it's only with that collaboration. That's exactly what the story is about. It's like yeah. we're this living is, the story. This, this is awesome. Like yeah. seriously, like this whole story is is amazing. And it really is like a complete goat rodeo. Like how did this all come together and oh, work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. When I, when I first heard about the show, because uh, I'm friends with the, one of the writers, and I, I shouldn't say this again, but I was like, I didn't know how it was going to work. I was like, how are you going to have actors, musicians do this and it be about jazz, which typically doesn't do well on Broadway. Right. Mm. And, and then you're going to have the, act, and then you're gonna oh, have the actors swing. You know? Right. Oh, it's and, yeah, oh, and then the ensemble come in and be the, the, the band when, when one of us are out. 
I don't know how it's all it. working, but everyone is so has all these hidden talents. Everyone is so dedicated so and talented well. and just easy to work yeah, with. Yeah, not a bad apple in the bunch. The entire oh, wow. cast, top to bottom, every single. I'm stuck single... on goat rodeo, by the way. What a great phrase that I've never heard before. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. A goat rodeo is is like when you take, it, it's from uh, I believe it's from like aircraft stuff, but it's uh, like you've got all these things that shouldn't be able to fit together. Mm. And you take them and you will put them all together and there's like a million things that have to go right f in order for that to happen and that's a goat rodeo. Okay. You guys <laughs> okay. All know? I have no idea. Right, you never right. heard that before? No, I guess the southern awesome. thing. I'm, I'm going to now south. use that wrong all the time. keep smacking the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I want to see if I can uncover one more hidden talent. Cool. Who wants to make a drink? Ooh. Hey. Uh, yeah? yeah? Look, his hand went right up, dude. He's, he's the drunk in the show. That's true. I drink okay. a lot. Awesome. You, right. you, why, don't you, why don't you turn this thing into a goat rodeo, man? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have you make... Um, He's going to start making everything. Exactly. Right there, my friend. Okay. We're going right. to have you make a B-52. Okay. Right, which is a, sort of an old school drink. It's sort of a, um, you know, 80s and 90s kind of drink, even before that. But I got two right there, so why don't you give those two uh, to your colleagues. Cool. And then you can make yours. So if you can see, this is a layered drink. We call that a Pus Cafe. Yeah, that's the name that's of that. That's what we call Nate, actually. Yeah, but I'm yeah. now going to start calling it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Nice yeah. um, okay, cool. Um, so, it's a layered drink. Okay. And it's Kahlua, Bailey's, and Grand Marnier. And it's based on the fact that they all have different, um, different densities. Right. Um, specific gravities is what we say. And so, they will, they will layer automatically. One will float on the other. So, in the speed rail right there, you have a bottle of Kahlua is the first thing that you're going to bring up. Okay. Good. And just pour that right in. You want to fill it about a third of the way. Now, eventually, even if you were to pour these all together, eventually gravity would pull them apart. Okay. But we're gonna, we don't want to wait that long. So go ahead and take right. the, uh, the Baileys, which should be right next to it. Good. And we're going to help with it. We're going to take that bar spoon and put it, yeah, put it in the drink. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to sort of help the Baileys not break the surface tension. So you okay. want to pour it on the bar spoon and let it run down the side of the glass. So put the spoon right up against the side of the glass. Yeah. You know he's doing character research with this. Yeah. Love it. Good. Look at that. See how oh, beautiful that works? Yeah. Come on. Nicely done. What a goat hey. rodeo. Yeah. You, <laughs> that's the opposite of a goat rodeo. What is the opposite of a goat rodeo? That's a good uh, regular, regular rodeo. Regular rodeo. Straight up rodeo. Straight up rodeo. What a straight up rodeo. Straight up rodeo. Okay, <laughs> and then you have some, uh, some Grand Marnier, which is, should be sitting uh, right on the, yeah, the drain board. Good. Same exact thing that you just did. Okay. And you want to, again, keep it from... Uh, hitting too hard, that's what that spoon is doing. Okay. You're doing a really good job of this, by the way. And you can see gravity mm -hmm. is really doing all the work for you. Gorgeous. Look at this guy Gorgeous. go. Hey, he's like a little better than. Uh, Come on. Huh? Beautiful. Yeah. That, look, he even got the like proportions right. Hey. Dude, well done. <laughs> Professional. That is a straight, up, straight up rodeo right there. I love it. Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy your B52s. Congratulations awesome. on all the success. Thank you. Thank you. And the upcoming Tony nominations. And I cannot wait to see the show. Um, please come see awesome. the Imbibe. Yeah, you guys get a chance. Yeah. Uh, cheers, man. Very Give it a shot. You don't have to. You don't have to Let's, shoot it. All right, nice you can sip it. Oh. Yep, absolutely. I'm not a big fan of shots. All right. So Let's Let's good. It. Folks, thank you so much. You can follow us on BroadwayBartender.com. Oh. Guys, what's the website of the show? How do they find you? Uh, BandstandBroadway.com. BandstandBroadway.com. Mm -hmm. And I'll certainly be tuning into the Tonys. Awesome. You can also text Nate at. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have personal websites that you want to plug at all? I'm at J Nathan Hopkins on Twitter and Instagram and uh, JamesNathanHopkins.com. James Nathan Hopkins? You can find me on Instagram at Machete Thunderpants. We're not great. <laughs> awesome. You need to change that to Goat Rodeo, but, but that's good. Okay. Instagram Fender AW. I love it. Guys, thank yeah. you so much. BroadwayBartender.com. You can check out the recipes. We'll have links to the show. Join us next week. Drink well, drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers. It's good, yeah? Yeah, it's nice. When you sip it, you get mostly yeah. the, the thing on top, right? When you sip it, you, you get them in layers. If you would tilt it back Great. a little bit more. You guys come on every week. That was awesome, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well done, boys. That was freaking great. Yeah.